city of tomorrow. You just have to imagine one. Look what these 26 people are about to do. It was in Vienna last September. There was someone from each country of the European Union, as well as someone from Romania. They volunteered and were chosen among 575 Europeans who expressed an interest for the project. Did they know each other before? Wait, I can ask them. Excuse me, uh, for how long have you been knowing each other? Um, oh, about three, three, four minutes. Um, <laughs> what are you here for? We're here to discuss about sustainable cities. At least that's what I'm here to, to discuss and about what the strategies and the ideas for sustaining a quality of life in, in, in European cities. I'm here to, to learn more about how citizens should organize and voice their opinion to the politicians or to whoever has any administrative power. Actually, they're here to give their opinion on the relevance and the acceptability of the City of Tomorrow research program. On the basis of your experience, European citizens, your daily life, your life, your feelings. Everyone express his or her point of view on the question, and it's not a debate in the group. Sustainable development is maybe um, to be happy with less. If I manage to, uh, if the, the um, conditions are such that I'm able to be happy with less, then that will be a, a sustainable thing because we can't be happy with. Um, we, with all the more, we were not necessarily happy and we just use up all the resources and all the possibilities we have. People always uh, want things to be cheaper and, and they don't look at what the real costs are. So I think sustainability is probably about recognising what the real costs of the things. What did we understand the European Union expect from us? What are we willing to accept or not to accept to reach a greater sustainability? These are some of the questions citizens talk about. Then, experts show them a synthesis of the 140 City of Tomorrow research projects results. But it's important, it's a tool, it's a very useful tool to understand. This information is short, uh, such a short time. It's it's, it's, very, it's very difficult to, and I, I think some people f feel it that as uh, useless. How deep we are going to go? How far we are going to go? Because if we are not supposed to be an expert, so don't make an expert out of us. We want the information. We just want the short version, the Mickey Mouse version, that we can all understand. And then we can give you feedback and questions and you can ask us. But we need just simple information for simple people. The group starts to, to catch the question. They started to say, what we want to say is different to what you want to hear. Utilize that time From well. this very session in Vienna, they start to reflect on the notion of sustainable urban development with Rudolf Zunke from the planning department of the city of Vienna. Then they move on to the theme of urban governance with Robert Leichner, who implements the Agenda 21 in the district of Vienna. His initiatives with the population make a real impact on the participants. The thing that definitely astonished me the most is the, pub is the public breakfast. Really. Something I immediately start to brainstorm. Can I do this when I get back home? Because it's such a brilliant idea and I would love to see this happening at home. And he said it's important. Yeah, but the difference here in, in, in Vienna is that uh, an organization was hired to come in and organize the whole process. If I understand it correctly, and if we understood it correctly, that this process is, is about getting our feedback on what we think will work or what we think will not work, what we think we should do more of and what we think we should perhaps do less of. Now, to be, for us to be able to do that, we need to understand quite precisely what is it that we're being asked to offer an opinion on. Somehow, the, the, the information passed from the organizers is not what we would expect. And we're still sort of 
I think the team of the 26 countries is working perfectly. And I think it's like the image of Europe. It's, it's you know, it's, it's running even without the officials. It's <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, but this is what I feel. Where is the city they were thinking about? Have they finished now? <laughs> no, they still need more information to come to an opinion. And this is why they get together again in Rome three weeks later. This time, I think the race, the race team expects it a bit more from, from us. Instead of just being a passive uh, group listening to what the project leaders have to say to us, we are going to already bring our own opinion about the project, so at least about the theme, so that those who are working actively on these projects can understand how does the general public see what they're doing and what's their view of the theme, because it's always different from experts to lay people. Still, the expectations remain unclear, and Claude, like others, says it loud. He's saying you've put so much questions out the questions that we begin to think that maybe there is a trick to answer the questions. Hopefully, Eric Pontieu of the European Commission's DG Research and in charge of urban sustainable development and cultural heritage spends the day with them and reassures them. You can be sure of one thing, at least, is that the Commission is very committed to use the declaration. And it's up to us, and especially the Commission, to push other EU institutions, like the European Parliament, the Council, but also I'm thinking of the Committee of the Region, to do something with it. Was there any citizens' involvement when you made those decisions? The other thing was the, the distribution systems with the eco vans in the city centre. That seems like an excellent idea. And I have a question about that, which is how is the electricity generated to operate the vans, which is always a problem. The man to whom the questions of Trin and Linda are addressed is Vito Maria Contursi from Genoa. He has set up, with some help of the DG research, an array of measures to reduce the negative impact of transport in his city. Sitting in the taxi, and we spent, uh, let's, say, let's say, one year discussing about uh, good distribution, because it means uh, to cut the city centre, making it possible to enter only, for example, from 8 to 11. Then, Cristina Sabioni from National Research Council, who works closely with the DG Research, makes things clear. And you are already aware that cultural heritage is a non-renewable resource. If it is lost, it's lost. Culture is not a commodity, and we are not consumers. There's something very, very valuable about it, and I'm interested in any research that's coming out, funded by the European Union, about those issues, about policy management, with respect to cultural heritage? Uh, research on cultural heritage uh, on European level is extremely important, maybe because some of the national governments don't really pay enough attention to cultural heritage. But if they hear it from Europe, that they have something that's very, very valuable, and they have to take care of that, they will have to listen. For me, as a researcher, is a very good opportunity because uh, uh, we are used to spread uh, our result uh, at a scientific conference, uh, at a festival of science. Uh, but uh, to make uh, science uh, visible to citizens is very hard. <laughs> I feel uh, a little small I, and I want to be bigger in knowledge and uh, I hope that the end of this project I will get a satisfactory explanation or of my questions. I don't know if your wishes will come true but it's more than six speakers that one after the other talk to the participants in Rome. Walter Tocci, former Roman vice-mayor. 
Dario Esposito, Roman Councillor for Environmental Policies, Roberto Balarotto from SHI, one of the City of Tomorrow programs, teaches the group the basics of sustainable housing. Between each speaker, the group reacts on the spot. Whatever their opinion, their reactions are always square, colorful, and stick to the point, and to the wall. I was always cynical about all this sustainable stuff. Now, knowing more about that and thinking also myself about what does it mean living in a city, living in a sustainable city and in a non-sustainable city, and uh, thinking about the future, that changed my mind. I never thought about this, you know. And Sebastian quickly joins the group for a last stretch of work. They start to talk what they would like to see emerge in the declaration. The whole project to produce the declaration can be used as an example to further research or to be uh, COVID for other situations. Take the citizens into account and to make sure that every time the politicians, they have to make a decision, they also uh, can hear the voice of uh, the common citizens. So the, the declaration becomes a sort of model for the future. We cannot fall from the sky and, and, and land on a building in Brussels and start preaching. What is very important is our input. And our input is, is to my mind also what we did in Vienna. When we, um, when we worked together and um, the things that are acceptable and things that are not acceptable in the cities of, of the future. Here we go again for an ultimate discussion. Oh my, they work very hard, but at least they don't have any homework when they get home. But they do. Between two sessions, they carry on reading, thinking about it, and exchanging ideas by internet. I couldn't manage all that, unless I had a magic potion. They don't have a magic potion, but they do have a war cry. Let me hear you banging the head off this. And Koo Holland from Ireland. Now, and what we're going to do is we're going to shout Reyes Abu, okay? Victory to Reyes. Reyes Abu! Reyes Abu! Reyes Abu! Luckily, the European Commission buildings have a real capacity to channel energies. Fed with information in Vienna and Rome, the group now debates on the message they would like the final declaration to convey. In Tokyo, for example, you can only buy a car when you can prove that you have a place to put it. Yes. So maybe this is another method of uh, changing attitudes, like... Um, Restrictions on car use. Yeah. Right. This is the stick, the stick side. Yeah. Mm. Instead of the cut yeah. side, mm. this is the stick side. Yeah. yeah. So, and we can uh, use the example of London. But I don't know if uh, that's the reason. If that's the reason, actually, why we should work but, uh, on cultural heritage on a European level, but, if there are not other reasons that are better. <laughs> now it puts solutions. Uh, every solution mentioned here, like no, tax on suburban it's residential development. <laughs> For now, it's just identifying I was explaining the problems. Things. Solutions, problems and solutions. Okay, you want to stick with problems and then make around the problems? Okay, finish. Next. Carrot and stick. So you use the carrot to... <laughs> Sometimes, the spirit of the place influences the conversation. Just, just use the stick if you don't give him the carrot as an alternative. Because then you have a rebellion, you know. Yeah, people then say, then no, we not people don't have a way to, to change the, their behavior. Right. Each group has a specific issue to reflect on. Urban governance, built environment, cultural heritage, or, like Aphrodite, on the transport issue. And I think that our, our topic is the most concrete of all the three because it's something that we face every day and it has to do with our everyday. So we couldn't be very philosophical and vague about it. We had to do ABC. It was, you know, like that. Hope. <laughs> the motivation is still there. But the bodies are tired. 
Come on, a last push. So finally, what do you think will happen to your work? I suppose the worst thing that could happen would be that it would just end up in somebody's desk drawer somewhere. But um, I, I think maybe not the declaration, but perhaps, as we've tried to say, that perhaps the changes that's happened in, in us are what's important. Uh, I think we all feel a lot more motivated and we'll go out there and go home and back to our own communities. And one of the points we tried to make in the, in the conclusions, the bits of the conclusions that we've written is that um, 26 people who were, were complete strangers two months ago came together and produced this piece of work together and, and have made that sort of commitment and, and now are, are 26 friends. And what will the people in Brussels think of their work? The people in Brussels know how to welcome meaningful projects. That's the day for the citizens. A quick coffee because it all starts at full speed at the European Commission. There, representatives of DG Research and various stakeholders listen to them. We believe that uh, cultural heritage does not uh, encompass only the tangible things, the architecture, the buildings. We believe that it is very important to stress that cultural heritage is also language, literature and uh, other intangible aspects. We also have another wish. Our wish is also to, to build a sense of ownership with citizens, which eventually will, will, uh, will foster a culture of commitment. Because we came to the conclusion that when citizens are committed, when citizens have a claim in their street, in their village, in their town, then they really participate in the sense of urban governance. It appears to us that sometimes they uh, just appear to be simple solutions to complex problems and they're just expensive prestige projects. Um, the master uh, must be the behavior, the motivation and the needs um, of the people using the transport. That must be addressed first and foremost and then technology can um, serve its aim as a servant of these aims. I would like to uh Thanks a lot of you for this exercise. Uh, as you know, we are requested to make a lot of efforts uh, as the uh, European Commission, especially the officers that work in the European Commission. And uh, when you look at our position, you start now to understand our difficulties. Um, so I think that it's a, a very useful document. I hope that it will be taken ahead. Um, and I hope that it will also help um, get a better uh, horizontal approach between different European institutions and all the associations that might help inform uh, decision makers and politicians and that we could also bridge the gap between the citizens and their needs and how you perceive a development of a city because you're the ones that make a city dynamic. If you're not there, if citizens aren't in cities, then they're not dynamic, they're not nice places to live because it's all about people. It was totally unclear to us six months ago that uh, the citizens are going to be able to capture this very complex notion of sustainability, that the citizens are going to be able to enter in detail into the research outcomes from the key action city of tomorrow. All these uncertainties have been lifted and we can see now that we have a group of citizens, 26 citizens, very committed, very enthusiastic, who have delivered the declaration which is going to be uh, used by the Commission, is going probably to be used by other institutions, other stakeholders, networks of cities, etc., for furthering their activities in the urban domain. With hardly a moment to grab a bite for lunch, they are whisked off to the European Parliament, where they are invited by the MEP Jean-Marie Beaupuy to present their declaration. Le travail fait par les 26 citoyens ici présents doit constituer un travail important pour que le besoin de chaque citoyen soit mieux résolu parce qu'on aura mieux écouté les citoyens de la France. People, they, they fear what they don't know. I think that's one key issue here. So 
through governance, through better governance, through more participation of people, people who understand more about policy decision-making, which now is too far away from the people. So we have to shorten the distance between these air-conditioned rooms and what's happening outside. That's through better governance. Very often decisions are made and then presented or communicated to citizens, and quite often that's called consultation. And it clearly isn't. I think even national governments are not really aware of uh, what exists, of the potential of their own citizens. So it would be good to make this presentation in front of each national government, in fact, to show what uh, citizens um, you know, are able to do and to reach. If we, as a group of 26 people who came together as strangers, can learn from each other and change our lives, it's possible for other groups to do the same. Our group gives evidence of generating a global dynamic. My question is, if this process seems to work and should be enhanced, which are the things that could be improved, that you suggest has to improve? Thank you very much. And finally, they officially signed the citizens' declaration before handing over. Hello, my name is Arto Gekki. I'm coming from Tampere, from Finland. And I feel more European than at the beginning. I really believe now that uh, European democracy can be enriched with uh, citizens' involvement. I really enjoy the process. But we need the support and examples of our leaders and our fellow citizens. <laughs> Cheers! Raise a boo. Raise a boo. <laughs> <laughs> Je souhaite qu'au niveau de chaque État membre, ce genre d'expérience soit démultiplié, renouvelé, réalisé pour le plus grand nombre de citoyens possible. Et puis enfin, j'espère bien qu'au niveau du Parlement européen et de la Commission européenne, nous allons prendre des décisions dans les mois et années qui viennent qui permettent justement le renouvellement de ce genre d'expérience. Yes, whatever. Well, well, oh, yeah. <laughs> Interviewed by their national media, by their MEPs, by European organizations, for some of them, and maybe for all, the adventure is not over. I would like just to explain what does mean uh, the race logo. The open hand in this way actually means raise the awareness of uh, uh, your awareness of things and changes around you. Uh, don't wait for others doing what you can do by yourself, but don't do it alone. Do it with other European citizens. And this means also that you have to take your hands and to shake with that of the others in this way. And this is a kind of symbol and I think that uh, this was the way in which the process uh, of race uh, performed so far. Tomorrow.